All right, Carter, thank you so much. College basketball on CBS Sports Network presented by Ace Hardware. And we've got the only game in Conference USA today. The Western Kentucky Hilltoppers, the favorites to win the conference and the East Division leaders taking on the Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders. Western Kentucky won last night in the first of this back-to-back -back by 15 points. Western Kentucky led by Charles Bassey playing like an All-American right now for Middle Tennessee. Dontrell Schuler came back last night for the first time in a month. He scored 18 points and he's getting his second start of the season. With Michael Donnell, I'm Chris Hassel. Interesting circumstances once again for Western Kentucky in this one. Rick Stansbury, the head coach of the Hilltoppers, did not make the trip. Had a fever, so didn't make the short trip from Bowling Green. The interim head coach is Phil Cunningham, but good news, Mike. They expect Coach Stansbury to be back next week. He continues to test negative for COVID-19. Wish him well. Always kind of a scary sign, but those extra precautions are things you have to take this season in a season of uncertainty. We got color on color. Western Kentucky in the red, Middle Tennessee in the blue. It is a rivalry game. And Mike, this Western Kentucky team is playing like an at-large tournament team right now. One of the reasons is their role players have really stepped up. Carson Williams, who has struggled the first six games of the season, found his offensive rhythm. And Luke Frampton comes off the bench and has been lights out from three, knocking down from the perimeter. Yeah, the Hilltop have been shooting it very well from deep the last couple of games 17 of 31 over their last two games as they look to win their fourth straight a turnover to start the game for Western Kentucky and Mike last night they had some first half turnover issues as well nine turnovers for Western Kentucky a team who so far this season has done a really nice job of taking care of the basketball but that's what Middle Tennessee does they speed you up in the half court and force you to make uncharacteristic plays you don't normally practice and there's Dontrell Schuler hitting his first jump shot. Boy, it's great to see him back on the floor. His jumper always feels like he's off balance, but he's consistent in the mid-range. If it goes in, right, no need to fix it. Shot clock under 10 for the Hilltoppers. They swept Marshall last weekend, but that was a home and home, trying to do it on the road, which has been really hard to do in Conference USA play this season. Well, it doesn't matter who you're doing. It doesn't matter, you know, what conference you're in. Winning against the same team back-to-back -back days is very difficult. Coach Stansbury told us, he said, to mentally stay that locked in is one of the most difficult things he's ever had to coach. Now, Hollinsworth rarely misses those shots, but Carson Williams gives him another chance. Ball did. Stay in bounds in Carson Williams. He's really coming on the last couple of games. He was averaging only about five, six points a game, but his last two games averaging 15 and a half. Well, he had uh, the previous two previous games ago. He had 16 points with three threes versus Marshall. He's not normally a three point shooter. Teams are backing off him, starting to be really consistent. Good sign for the Hilltoppers. Hollingsworth left all alone and again missing Rick Stansbury. We talked to him earlier in the week and he was saying that, you know, Tavion's missed some of those shots lately, those 12-footers that he's normally so good at. You know, one thing that I think Hilltopper fans will say is, you know, why isn't Tavion Hollingsworth scoring more? As he does a great job attacking, getting the free throw line, one of the things he does so well. Well, one of the reasons why Hollingsworth isn't scoring as much this season as he was last season, because he doesn't have to. Charles Bassey has been so dominant on the interior that he's the defensive focal point for scatter reports. And when he can, when he's the focal point in the low post, a back to the basket player, he's going to receive double teams. That means the lane is more clogged up. That means Hollingsworth doesn't have enough driving lanes and opportunities to get to the rim. You saw Phil Cunningham, the acting head coach on the bench, a couple of other assistants out as well. But Cunningham uh, is, is well qualified. He was on Rick Stansbury's staff at Mississippi State. His father coached Rick Stansbury at Campbellsville, and this guy was a head coach for six seasons at Troy, led him to the NCAA tournament just four seasons ago. At, at no question, he is more than capable of taking over the interim reigns, but and, and not to take anything away from Coach Cunningham at all, and I think he would tell you this, you've got this, you've got a veteran-led team, or you got guys like Hollingsworth and Bassey and Williams that understand the offense, they understand the culture and how to play, and that helps when you have your head coach out. 
Davion McKnight missing on the jumper. Western Kentucky, a 5-2 lead early on. Three minutes gone by. Glad to have you with us here on CBS Sports Network. Second of four games. And that's a corner three for Jordan Davis. Hurt his hand in the game last night. They were worried he wasn't going to be able to return after halftime, but he's a gamer, isn't he? Well, and he they knocked down threes last night. They were a good three-point shooting team. That, that drive and kick action really worked well for them. Carson Williams is showing what a beast he can be inside. It's just the little things. You know, he's not always going to wow you, but the reason why Western Kentucky stays in so many games if Charles Bassey's not particularly playing well is because of Carson Williams and his play. He does all the little things that don't always show up. Schuler misfiring on the three, and here comes Western Kentucky. Josh Anderson, not much of a three-point shooter, but if you leave him open, he can make them. What happens when Josh Anderson starts knocking down threes? And you add that into Carson Williams is knocking down threes, and then you bring Luke Frampton in off the bench, who's shooting over 50% from three. <laughs> in the last five games. I mean, this, this team could be scoring in the 80s and 90s every game if they wanted to. Well, we've talked about how Charles Bassey leads the country in dunks. He also leads the country in blocks. But Josh Anderson is probably the most emphatic dunker on this team, and maybe in Conference USA. It's an early lead for the Hilltoppers, going for win number four in a row. Basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Ace, the helpful place, by AT&T 5G, fast, reliable, secure, and by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Western Kentucky with a 10-5 lead on Middle Tennessee. Chris Hassel with Mike O'Donnell. It's time for the O'Donnell rules on how to neutralize Charles Bassey. Three rules. Got to play off two feet. Keeps you in control. Allows you to utilize ball fakes, shot fakes, which can really kind of put the shot blocker at bay. You have to force Bassey away, away from the rim. Put him in pick and rolls, dribble handoffs, flare screens. Got to take him out of his comfort zone. And then you want to go through his body. You can't play timid. If you initiate contact, it negates his length and timing, and it gives Bassey kind of a blind spot where he likes to have space to block those shots. And head coach of Middle Tennessee, Nick McDevitt, was saying going into this series that you still have to attack him. You have to get in there. If you don't attack him, he's not going to get in foul trouble. He's going to play the whole game. And I think Middle Tennessee just totally forgot that they didn't have a full shot clock. Well, uh, but going back to your point, though, Chris, they – Middle Tennessee did a good job of attacking Bassey in the first half. Charles Bassey only had four points and two fouls with limited action in the first half because of the fouls. As you can see how great he is uh, uh, statistically, but you know he affects your offense because of how intimidating he is around the rim. You're almost afraid to drive, and you can't be. Carson Williams has seven points. Double team, Anderson and Bassey. And now they draw Bassey way out from the basket. Interesting to see Western Kentucky double the post. They didn't do that last night. Another double. Oh, and another turnover for Middle Tennessee. Back-to-back -back possessions. And Nick McDevitt knows they, they can't afford stuff like that. In his third season at Middle Tennessee, he was really looking forward to this season but they just haven't been able to have the core together. Going into this series, it was the first time in a month and a half they had all 14 players yeah. available for practice, but then Donovan Sims hurts his knee. He's out for this series of games. Jalen Jordan dislocated his finger last night. He's not playing. Uh, the, the coaching staff had to, be their, had to be the zone offense for multiple practices. And he said, Coach McDevitt was like, I'm glad that the coaches were terrible on the <laughs> offense, but we didn't make anything. But that just meant that our zone defense was so good. Yeah, defense hasn't been the issue for Middle Tennessee. One of the best at defending the three-point shot this season. It's, it's been this, this side of the ball, the offense. They need more easy baskets like that from DeAndre Dishman. Yeah, they have a top five uh, field goal percentage defense in Conference USA, and they are the best team in Conference USA at defending the three. They hold teams to under 28% from three on the conference season. And Dishman got his hand on it, almost created a turnover. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. 
Bassey. Good high low action. Oh man, and he never took that ball down, kept it above his head. But the touch on the pass by Carson Williams, I mean, you have to have, you can't just be a good passer. You have to have chemistry with your post player to know exactly where to put it to make that kind of pass. Bassey one on one and didn't go up for the block, but the shot no good from Jared Coleman Jones. I, I like that move, though. I, I, I think that shot doesn't go down, but the more that you can attack Bassey with a baby hook, the better. See, if you don't have anything in transition right here for Middle Tennessee, I'd go right back inside. You, you could see there's a, there's a desire to attack him early. And we're seven minutes into this thing, and Western Kentucky hasn't committed a foul yet. You know, they really wanted to get Bassey in some foul trouble. Middle Tennessee needs more of that. Three-pointer reined in from Jace Johnson. Good inside out. You saw the ball movement went around the perimeter with the driving kick at the end. The more you can get into the paint against Western Kentucky, three-point shots will be open. Last night it was an 82-67 win for Western Kentucky. And Charles Bassey in that one had 16 points, 12 rebounds, and four blocks. Did you see that line of sight for Carson Williams? Almost non-existent. You have to have awareness and chemistry in order to make a pass like that. And trust, right? I mean, trust that, that Bassey, the freak, is going to go up there and get it. Well, trust comes from Charles Bassey being an athletic freak, knowing that he catches everything that's thrown around the rim. This is Kenny Cooper into the game at point guard, and Luke Frampton as well, the three-point sharpshooter, number 14. Jordan Rawls to Bassey. A lot of dribbling, and he had it stripped away. Nice Not bounce pass Ooh. underneath, but a missed point-blank shot by Johnson. It was good action offensively. And defensively, almost forcing another turnover. Well, you got a mouse in the house down low. Whistle before that shot. And that's a turnover on Western Kentucky, 14-10. Nick McDevitt says, hey, keep this up. Let's go at Bassey. Let's get him going. Point lead, 11.50 to go, first half in Murfreesboro, Tennessee against the Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders. Let's take a look at the AT&T 5G fast analysis on Charles Bassey's shot selection. In his first couple years, Charles Bassey at Western Kentucky was more of a back-to-the-basket player. He was a great athlete, and he'd block shots and get a lot of dunks. But now he's added a variety of moves down in the low post, and his ability to step out and shoot the three has NBA scouts salivating about his game. I really believe that Charles Bassey is going to end up being a first-round draft pick in the upcoming NBA draft because of his ability to play inside out now. Conference USA might have a couple of first-round picks in the NBA draft with Bassey and Marshall's Tavian Kinsey. Kinsey is a big-time athlete combo guard out of Marshall that you know, right now he's pro could, he's projected to be late first early second round in the NBA draft he's been playing that good well, Middle Tennessee just four for 15 from the floor but doing a pretty good job defensively Western Kentucky has been out of it the last four of the last five possessions they've been held empty a couple of turnovers as well And a rebound goes to Jace Johnson. Middle Tennessee's only wins have come at home. All three of them on this floor. This is a lineup for Western Kentucky in which you need quick ball movement. With Hollingsworth out, who becomes your playmaker? Frampton. Good defense by Middle Tennessee. Great closeout in recovery. Wow. And Rawls has to create. Oh, that's a bailout off the square. You just see him make tough shot after tough shot because that was an excellent half-court defensive possession for the Blue Raiders. Rawls just came up big time on the wing. Nice drive to the hoop. Jace Johnson 
quietly had himself a really nice first half here. Johnson knocked down a big catch and shoot three. You could see he's gifted offensively. You just kind of wonder, you know, why he goes quiet for longer periods of time. That's a patented move from Williams, unable to finish. Had those seven quick points, but he's missed his last two. We're halfway through the first half, Mike, and Western Kentucky hasn't committed a foul yet. Well, they do a great job of playing hard without fouling. It's, it's a, a good sign of a team who plays exceptionally hard. The harder you play, the less you foul. That means you're in position, you're not reaching, and there's a commitment to the scatter report. And with Bassey out, Coleman Jones was looking to post up. And they get to the paint once again. That was a good look, but Davis unable to finish. That's about the fourth really good look for Middle Tennessee that just haven't been able to convert. Under 30% to start this game for Middle Tennessee. Not a good shooting team at about 37% this season from the floor. That's a good look at three once again off the mark. Two for eight from three-point range for Middle Tennessee in this game. But going to get another crack at it and like last night. Middle Tennessee right there, halfway through this first half. They were down eight at the break. Then it was a 13-0 run to put it out of reach early in the second half as Javante Milner-Chris, who fouled out in that game last night, makes it a two-point game. Good seal by Milner-Chris. There was zero help side defense for West Kentucky. Just like that, Middle Tennessee, because of their energy and their effort and their commitment to lockdown defense, got themselves back into this game, only down two. How much of it has to do with Bassey not being out there? I think it has more to do with Hollingsworth being out and not creating offense. you got to remember, just because Hollingsworth doesn't score doesn't mean he doesn't have a huge impact on the game. That's the one thing with this lineup for West Kentucky. If Bassey's out, that's fine. But if, uh, if Hollingsworth is out, you've got to find playmaking. And check out MOD for three. That's Michael Donald's Twitter site. He'll tell you why Charles Bassey's dunks are so important to the offense. And it's not just the dunks, but it's, it's the way he runs the floor. Right? He, he rim races. It's a concept that's trickled down from the NBA. It's, you don't want your post players just to rim run. You want them to race down the floor and beat your opponent because it puts pressure at the rim. The fear of giving up a Charles Bassey dunk opens up corner and wing threes. And the corner three in the game of basketball is statistically the most efficient three-point shot in the game. Mike does a good job breaking that down. It's also on the CBS Sports Network Twitter page. Yeah, maybe I'll have more than uh, 15 followers after this. Oh. You know you can you can buy them, right? I assume that's what I you did to get to over 50,000. <laughs> yeah. Oh, those are just a bunch of Iowa footballs from uh, my great home state. Nick McDevitt and the Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders only down two, 7.52 to go first half. Conference USA split up by division this season, and Western Kentucky is at the top of the East Division with Old Dominion shut down this weekend due to COVID. Western Kentucky has already swept the season series with Marshall, and they they look to be the team to beat in this division. But boy, on the other side, UAB is off to a great start. UAB is 12 and two. They're five and one in conference. They have the third best scoring defense in the nation. They're holding teams to 57 points a game. Lockdown defense. But I'm telling you though, right now. Outside of Old Dominion, the biggest threat for Western Kentucky in the East Division is Charlotte. Charlotte? Their, de their defense wow. is really You're good. Marshall there. No, 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 no. Their, their defense is really good. And if they can play consistent half-court defense like they have so far this season, I think that could be a huge threat to Western Kentucky. Well, I was there for the games Western Kentucky played at Charlotte, and Charlotte got the split. But Charles Bassey was a shell of himself. He had back spasms in both games. He was very stiff. He was out for about 14 days before that game, mm -hmm. right? And Charlotte has struggled a little bit of late. They lost to a D2 school. They split with FAU. I think Marshall's still going to have a say in this thing. Even though they got swept by Western Kentucky in a home-and-home -home last week, Marshall probably has the second best talent in the division. Well, Tavian Kinsey certainly is is that guy, right? He's going to be a first team all conference USA member and he's a future pro. So uh, certainly not doubting the Marshall Thundering Herd. Just giving you a little insider of what I'm seeing in half court defense. Yeah, I trust you, brother. Boy, six straight misses for Western Kentucky. And Middle Tennessee 
trying to take advantage, but neither team shooting it. Not even a one for three clip. Both teams below 33%. And I, I think there's only been one bad shot for Middle Tennessee. They've gotten great looks. They just haven't been able to convert them. And a traveling violation on Rawls. Last night, Western Kentucky pulling away in the second half to earn the victory. Shot it very well. Uh, 10 for 20 from three-point range. But look at the free throws there. They made 24 free throws. Middle Tennessee only attempted 10 free throws. That is the Rick Stansbury blueprint. No question. They won the rebounding battle as well, and they were 10 to 20 from the three-point line. But Western Kentucky won the effort plays and the energy plays in the second half. There's an energy play. Josh Anderson soaring. Oh, my goodness, Mr. Anderson. Whew. Yeah, like we said, Bassey leads the country in dunks. But if I'm paying money to see someone dunk, I'm I'm ponying up for Josh Anderson. No, there's there's no doubt. You get him in open space. I mean, he is just flight man. Wow. Snaps a streak of six straight misses for Western Kentucky. Tough entry pass in Middle Tennessee all over it. Jace Johnson comes up with the steal. And then he loses it. And now, a chance to re-key the offense. A corner three, way off the mark. That was Tyler Millen, only has five threes on the season. Bassey, no one put a hand in his face. Mike. Yeah, he'll knock that down all day. That, that mid-range jumper, the face-up jumper, is something that he's added to his game this season, and he's been extremely efficient knocking that down. Yeah, you, No question, Chris, you have to get a hand up. Millen again gets the entry pass. Bassey comes over with the help, and he was the one that stopped that possession, an easy basket. Three from Cooper. That was made possible by Josh Anderson because he pushed hard in transition, got it to the free throw line. Good vision to drive and kick. 7-0 run for Western Kentucky. Western Kentucky had an offensive lull. Middle Tennessee had a few chances to tie or take the lead, but 7-0 run for Charles Bassey and the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers once again playing without their head coach, Rick Stansbury, who's back home resting at a fever and decided out of an abundance of precaution in these COVID times to stay back, along with a couple of assistants, continues to test negative for COVID-19, and the acting coach, Phil Cunningham, doing a good job for Western Kentucky. But as Mike mentioned, we could do a good job coaching this team. I mean, they, <laughs> right. they're, they're, they're talented, they're veteran, they know what to do. And Phil Cunningham said after the game that ironically, Rick Stansbury was saying, because there's not as much communication from sideline to floor, from bench to floor with the masks, it's harder to tell what your coaches are saying. He wanted his team to, to be more player reliant. And that means each player holding, the, holding themselves accountable in the locker room and on the floor from a scatter report standpoint. So understanding time, score, possession. Is this player a shooter? Is this player a driver? And communicating as much as you can, communicating a message on the floor to hold each other player to player accountable. Oh, nice, nice pass kick. Rolls. But it was a traveling violation on Hollingsworth who's struggled in this one, 0 for 4 from the floor. Rawls has some game. Uh, you and I have seen him make some tough shots, and, you know, you got to remember he's playing behind Tavion Hollingsworth, and he's going to see even more playing time next season. But, I mean, this is a four – he was a four-star recruit coming out of high school. Had offers from Georgia Tech, Ole Miss, Kansas State. It's a great, great recruit for the Hilltoppers. Middle Tennessee's been stuck on 14 for a while. They've missed their nice last cut. five. Make it six as Bessie picks up his second block of the game. You know, one thing that Bassey does when he blocks a shot, a lot of times he'll keep it in bounds. It's another skill. You want skill. Look at Josh Anderson. 
best dunker on the team in Conference USA, maybe in the country. Love watching him fly. Western Kentucky up by nine. Middle Tennessee down by nine as we approach halftime. Coming up, we've got AT&T at the half. Check it in at the studio. Brent Stover, John Rothstein, AT&T at the half. That's a big time duo at halftime. Stover, Rothstein, you've got a country music celebrity and a, <laughs> and a college basketball savant and encyclopedia. I'd watch that. We'll be with John Rothstein uh, a little bit later in the season on one of our CBS Sports Network Facebook games involving Western Kentucky. Charles Bassey at the free throw line and is a double digit lead for the first time in this game for Western Kentucky. You know, he's six foot 11 and we talked about his improvement on the three point line. His defensive prowess is obvious leading the country in blocks and rebounding. And he shoots over 72% from the free throw line. And as much as much attention as he demands getting double teamed, late help, early help, and him getting to the free throw line, you're shooting over 72% from the free throw line is, you love that if you're an NBA scout. Now you see a guy built like that, that big, that athletic. Anymore, you just kind of assume he's not a very good free throw shooter. Well, right, right, because of, you know, just we're going off of history of, of guys who are six foot 11, great shot blockers, great rebounders. Very rarely do you add great free throw shooter into the mix. My favorite thing about Bassey doesn't show up in the stat sheet. I, he plays so hard, Chris. He just never stops moving. He sprints the floor. He boxes out. He is great on late help situations. He fights with his feet for post position. You've got to have great energy and effort. I think he shows great unselfishness when he brings energy and effort like that. And he's been known to make a three or two from the top of the key, but that went off the mark. Middle Tennessee looking to string a couple baskets together. They snapped a streak of over five minutes without a point. Dishman, a rolling hook. It might have been partially deflected. It was. Look at that rim race. And he threw it away too far underneath the basket. And Karsten Williams reaching in. I'm going to get a jump ball there. Possession arrow will keep it with Middle Tennessee. Well, that's what you were talking about, Mike. Rim racing. And at that time, it didn't work out for Bassey, but you just see him run the floor. Yeah, but Bassey was four feet away from the rim when he started his sprint and beat everybody down the floor. He looks like an Olympic sprinter. It's not just rim racing. It's rim to rim racing. No question. And, and, and it opens up the corners. And, and that corner three is, is such a desired three to get open because of statistically, it's an easier shot to line up as a shooter. Now, Eli Lawrence makes his first bucket of the game for Middle Tennessee. And... They look to get a little bit of momentum going into the halftime break as Rawls drops it home. He's got nice touch, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. And he really, he, he's a tough shot maker. What I mean by that is he has a consistent ability to make contested jump shots. And it, it, he doesn't have to be wide open. He doesn't always have to be in rhythm. But his form doesn't change regardless of whether or not a hand is in his face. It's a good D by McKnight. And a deep three. Pulled down by McKnight. Hollingsworth ahead of the pack. It looked like Hollingsworth wasn't sure if he should dunk it or lay it in, and he changed his mind at the last minute. I can't even do that on a little tykes hoop at home, let alone mid-game. A little, little show of athleticism for Hollingsworth. Lead back up to 11. 80 seconds to go in this first half. Got to get something, uh, some type of driving kick action around the free throw line. There's just no offensive rhythm. Hmm. That's tough. It was. Tough shot, but Schuler now has six. That's a guy that can get going. I mean, you're only, you're, you're only down nine here. This is similar to what happened last night, with only being down eight going into halftime. Middle Tennessee just kind of hangs around because of their defense, but their offense needs to find more continuity. Yeah, they had an opportunity to not only take the lead, but build a lead earlier on in this half when Western Kentucky was... Stuck on 16 points. 
it's incredible. Nasty boy. It's he incredible. That muscle there, didn't he? But also his the length. I mean, to, he shot that at complete verticality. You got to have great touch if you're going to shoot it with your arms completely straight up in the air. About a seven second difference, shot clock and game clock. And now a three, Javante Milner, Chris off the mark and plenty of time for Western Kentucky to get a good shot. Five seconds. This is Rawls. Williams. Western Kentucky taking an 11 point lead into the break. It wasn't pretty at times. They were below 30% from the floor for a while, but a good finish to the half. And the Hilltoppers are right where they expected to be. Up by double digits and looking to hang on to first place in the division. Nick McDevitt has his work cut out for him at halftime for Middle Tennessee. Hilltoppers are flying around again. Six point lead coming up after the break. AT&T 5G at the half. Almost ready to start the second half. Western Kentucky with an 11-point lead over Middle Tennessee. The Hilltoppers leading the division, going for a fourth consecutive win. With Mike O'Donnell, I'm Chris Hassel. Look, they, they didn't shoot it all that well for most of the first half. But still, they do the job defensively, holding Middle Tennessee to 20 points, and they have a comfortable lead. Well, I actually thought that Middle Tennessee had a pretty good game plan defensively. You, know, you hold a team like Western Kentucky, who has a lot of weapons to only 31 points in the first half. They just couldn't manufacture offense. Their action they ran wasn't too bad. It was pretty good. They just have to step up and knock shots down. Western Kentucky needs more transition offense to blow this game open. Charles Bassey with a good first half, eight points, seven rebounds, and three of those swats. And he was just outstanding. It's a typical Charles Bassey first half. Did it on the inside, did it on the outside. Little face up jump shot and then the blocking shots in the first half. It doesn't look like anything extraordinary other than the fact that he's the best athlete on the floor. He's six foot eleven with over a seven foot wingspan. He was just everywhere this afternoon. Taking a look at the first half stats and look at those fast break points for Western Kentucky. That was one of the keys for Middle Tennessee to try to control the pace, keep them out of fast break opportunities. But we saw a couple big dunks. Yeah, we'll put two of 14 from the three-point line for Middle Tennessee. They they knocked down five threes last night. They, they got good looks. They just didn't knock it down. And Charles Bassey is good to go for the second half. Had those back issues in late December, early January, but he looks fresh. Tavion Hollingsworth with a baseline drive to start the second half and a foul on Middle Tennessee. Didn't have many fouls in that first half. In fact, Western Kentucky only committed two. They were both by Kenny Cooper, so. That's the calling card for West Kentucky, right? Coach Stansberry's teams want to shoot more free throws than their opponents attempt. That's what happened last night. That's been a recipe of success for them the last few years. You were looking at Phil Cunningham, the acting head coach, as Rick Stansberry watches from home. Came down with a fever late in the week, did not make the trip. Continues to test negative for COVID-19. Four straight negative tests. We'll give him one more test tomorrow and then if he's t if he's still negative he'll rejoin the team question is what's going to happen next week for western kentucky because they're supposed to host old dominion on friday and saturday yeah and old dominion's on pause right now rick stansbury didn't seem uh, too optimistic about those games happening it'll be really interesting if that game doesn't get played if they try to find another non-conference game and and which opponent would that be? You know, would they try to go after maybe a, a major uh, uh, a conference team in order to continue to build their resume? They got an open week. You might as well play. And Coach Stansbury said we'd be open for that. Bassey gets fouled on the way up as Western Kentucky looks to extend no, he, lead. No, they got him with a travel wow, because yeah. he actually gathered his steps before the foul occurred. Hey, look, I'm with you, Charles. Yeah. I thought that was a foul, and then he found out. When we did. Well, I think that's a good call, actually. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah okay. it, he, he stutter stepped and took a little extra, little extra foot action before he gathered. Oh, 
Hey, and he comes back with his fourth swat of the game. You can't fade away. If you fade away, you give him space and time to, to line up his block. Shot by Eli Lawrence. He's got a smooth looking shot, doesn't he? He shot the ball really well last night, hit three threes. You know, he's a kind of guy that you'd like to see more action run for because he feels like he's always in rhythm. Ooh, Anderson, a little too hot for Bassey to handle, and they're going to get a charge. Yeah, that needs to be a lob. You got to be more to control, and you got to throw a little lob there. And that's, if you're going to fade away, you're done. You might as well kick the ball. You've got to, and that's another reason you go back to those O'Donnell rules. If you don't come down with two feet and go into his body, you are going to get blocked every single time. Schuler short, Bassey another rebound, well on his way to another double-double. Which would be number 11, and it would tie Kofi Coburn of Illinois for number one in the nation. Also leads the country in dunks. Great post players fight for position with their feet, not their arms. And that's exactly what Charles Bassey does in the low post. And Great example of that. Got that double-double now, Mike. 10, 10, and four blocks make it 11 rebounds now for Bassey. Just never looks tired. He never looks tired. Good entry pass by Carson Williams, and that's too easy. Bassey missed it, though. Not going to see that very often. Next time, he'll throw it down. That was time where he wasn't exactly sure how close he was to the rim and didn't time his jump up. Probably need to come down two hands with that. A good cut to the hoop and a slam from Jared Coleman-Jones. You can go at Bassey like that, but you, you have to be able to draw him towards the ball. If you come down with two feet and you kick it and find the cutter, it will be there. Ooh, Davion McKnight got away with one there, and Bassey cleans it up. Just a huge fan of Davion McKnight's vision. He's just a freshman, but just playing really sound basketball, handling the rock. Tough shot by Schuler. Offensive putback. For a second time, again no good. How about a third time? Swatted by Hollingsworth. Fourth time, Dishman gets to the line. I actually thought that's the, the, the play that was called a foul was cleaner than the first block by Hollingsworth. Check out the rim racing from back. And it's one of those things where Charles Bassey, when he's running the floor, just changes the entire landscape of the offense for Western Kentucky. You're going to be able to get some drag screens. You'll get better driving lanes. There's more pressure at the rim. McKnight just kind of shuffled it up there for Bassey, who was not ready for that. It was more McKnight out of control. Freshman mistake. Again, Western Kentucky looking for its best start in 19 years. Middle Tennessee still has something to say. If they can start hitting some threes, not, Big fella. not all, but some of the threes, they can be in this game. The energy and effort never changes. It stays at a high level for Middle Tennessee. Defense is not the issue. This is a very good defensive team. It's finding rhythm on offense that's a struggle. And a good defensive stop. We're going to get a tie up on the floor. Possession arrow will send it to Middle Tennessee. They were two for 14 from three until Coleman Jones just made it a single digit game. It's championship Sunday in the NFL, but how about tomorrow? Got to break it all down, right? Join our NFL experts as they break down all of the games, all two of them this afternoon and evening and get you ready for the Super Bowl given their latest analysis from a quarterback's point of view. NFL Monday quarterback tomorrow night 6 Eastern right here 
on CBS Sports Network. I'll be at the Super Bowl all week covering it for CBS Sports HQ. Looking forward to that. Why we just might as well keep rubbing it in that you're going to be at the Super Bowl all week, Chris. Thanks, man. Who are we going to see in the Super Bowl? Who you got? Chiefs, Packers. Mm. It's hard to go wrong with any matchup that we could get. These are going to be great games. I mean, I, I can't wait to watch. Here in Murfreesboro, Middle Tennessee, trying to make a run. They haven't made one yet. Down by eight and getting to the free throw line. Western Kentucky led by as many as 13. It was 37 to 24. Chipping away with defense and energy, Chris. You know, that, that last play uh, right before the timeout was Schuler diving on the floor. He was screaming in excitement. I mean, he was trying to pump this team up. When you dive on the floor for a loose ball, you get excited about that. You reignite your team. And you laser focus, if you can get to the free throw line, chip away at this thing, absolutely doable. Jace Johnson makes both. Middle Tennessee within six. I'd go right to Bassey here if I was Western Kentucky. You need some you need some type of easy bucket to get you out of a couple minute funk here. They're trying to go into him. Good help by Middle Tennessee on the weak side. And there's Bassey. They stopped him, but ripped away inside by McKnight. Maybe the smallest guy for Western Kentucky comes out with the biggest rebound. That was a man's rebound by the freshman. I love how hard McKnight plays. I mean, that was a good defensive possession for Middle Tennessee. They don't foul. They had help defense. McKnight just wanted it more. That's grit and toughness. McKnight, a really good free throw shooter, misses the first. Came into the weekend 25 for 28 at the line this season. Now, they weren't expecting him to play as much as he has. He's really taken a lot of minutes away from Kenny Cooper, the transfer from Lipscomb. And he's a starter now for this Hilltopper team. McKnight, was, he was the fifth best recruit coming out of the state of Kentucky. He was Mr. Basketball of Kentucky. Well, they get all the Mr. Basketballs there That's in Bowling right. Green, don't they? I sure do. Three of them on last year's team, three of them on this year's team. Like Anderson, one of those guys flopped the three off the mark. And Anderson, a one handed board. It's another one of those shots, though, Chris. That's, that's good offensive action for Middle Tennessee. It's lined up. You got drill penetration, a good skip, a rhythm three. Almost a steal by Davis. McKnight misses that. And Bassey never turned around until it was too late. And Jace Johnson cuts it to four. And Johnson saw that. He saw that Bassey's back was still turned. First time all game we've seen Bassey be be look tired. Don't be surprised if he gets a little breather here. Johnson up to nine points. And Bassey had that one poked. And he must have been poked as well. Looks like they're going to get Jared Coleman-Jones for the foul. Watch Johnson. He's looking at Bassey right now, and he sees his head is turned. Immediate attack goes right at Bassey. If you try to fade away, you're done. I'm a little surprised Bassey didn't at least go up. It's not like he's battling foul trouble or anything. He hasn't committed a foul yet. Exhaustion leads to plays like that for Bassey. Those are plays that he has to make even when he's tired. Now he's still out there, and Josh Anderson got the inbounds, and... Stops the bleeding for the time being. Lead back up to six. Controlling the paint again. And Anderson ties up Schuler. It's a foul on Josh Anderson. And Schuler does a, such a good job of attacking the inside of the three-point line. He puts his head down. He's got great body control, and he's really, really strong. Middle Tennessee. We got a tech. On who? Looks to be on West Kentucky. All right. They're going to get Tavion Hollingsworth for a technical foul after the turnover. And again, no Rick Stansbury. And a couple other assistants in this game for Western Kentucky staying back in Bowling Green because Stansbury had a fever but continues to test negative for COVID-19. So it's Phil Cunningham leading the way. And 
No, Tavion, the senior, is not happy. A little, little too much back and forth with the ref. Or one of the officials. Good backdoor cut. A block by Bassey, but a foul. Ooh, I'd love to see that again. That looked really clean. That's a great backdoor cut, a good pass. Yeah. Ooh. I think that's... I think more times than not, they're not going to call that a foul. I think that's play on. Well, at the end, if, if he, if Bassey gets a little bit of... Yeah, see, what they're calling, what I think the ref sees is, is Bassey's, his forearm ends up hitting the top of Milner Chris's head. Hand got all ball, but the forearm hit the very top of Milner Chris's head. Our officiating crew, Gary Maxwell, Darren George, and John Hampton. And Middle Tennessee, as close as they've been since about midway through the first half. Three-point game after Western Kentucky led by 13. 12-2 run over the last three minutes. Short. And that'll be a charge. Luke Frampton draws it. Stood right in front of Dontrell Schuler. I mean, Schuler is a freight train. And more often than not, he's going to make the right play. But he has one speed, and that's 100 miles an hour. So if you can get position and stay in front, you'll be able to draw a charge. And Schuler takes his seat. It feels like the Blue Raiders are just playing harder than the Hilltoppers right now. There's more energy. There's more sense of urgency on the defensive end. And right now, Western Kentucky is searching for some energy. This is why it's so tough to sweep a back-to-back. -back. Yep, that's right. And Coach Stansbury talked about that with us a few days ago, preparation of this series this weekend. It's really hard, especially if you beat a team, you know, by over 15. How do you stay locked in and do it again the next day? It's oh, tough. Bassey, another stuff. But that pass. I mean, Rawls is really good. He can make some big time plays with the basketball. And that's going to be an offensive foul on Middle Tennessee. Take a look again at the nice pass from Rawls. That's a really good touch. And you can see a, a dunk from Bassey ignites the energy for West Kentucky. You get a big dunk, all of a sudden the bench is up on two feet. On the other end, you're in position, you get an offensive foul. Dunks are more than just two points, Chris, for the right teams. And now we have some foul trouble for Middle Tennessee as Kenny Cooper gets to the basket and scores. Middle Tennessee has four fouls now on Milner Chris, three fouls on Coleman Jones. How about the straight line drive getting downhill by Cooper, that was tough. Johnson got away with a travel on the pivot foot. And Lawrence missed a point-blank shot. Lawrence was worried about getting a shot blocked against Bassey. Western Kentucky scored the last four after middle cut it to three. Tonight, 8 Eastern. Michael Donald, find out what it means to be a Cowboy. As the PBR season continues from the great outdoors, it's the PBR Unleash the Beast American Roots Edition right here on CBS Sports Network. Chris, what do you call a rodeo bull with a sense of humor? A laughing stock. Ah, okay. okay. Like the energy from Western Kentucky, <laughs> bringing it on both ends of the floor. That dunk by Bassey really ignited everything. I thought you were going somewhere else with that. Josh Anderson made one of those threes in the first half, not there. Double high ball screen for Middle Tennessee. Did not come off that harder than harder enough. Got an ISO play against Bassey. Bassey bumping, but I nice like it. Move. I like it. Jared Coleman Jones. Coleman Jones had a couple of those plays in the first half last night against Bassey. Went right at him. You ha you can't be timid. You have to do that. You've got to find ways to attack his chest. Bassey's really working hard down low. Rawls floating. He's got great touch. <laughs> he really does. He's just a tough shot maker. And this is why 
you know, West Kentucky is going to be a team when they make it to the NCAA tournament that they're going to be dangerous because if you lock up Frampton on the three-point line, Schuler misses that three. If Hollingsworth is on the bench with foul trouble, you've got a guy like Rawls who can step up and make shots for you. Well, even though Middle Tennessee didn't score there, Rick Stansbury has to be very upset at his house right now because they've given up yep. so many offensive rebounds in this game. Well, Middle Tennessee, this, this last six minutes of play, they're just playing hard. They're playing harder than Western Kentucky is. 11 offensive rebounds for Middle Tennessee. But they're only shooting 28% from the floor. And it's still a deficit down by 7, 10.39 to go. Western Kentucky by seven. Charles Bassey filling up the stat sheet. Well, Chris Hassel, you've heard of poetry in motion. This is power in motion. Bassey has the most dunks in the NCAA. He's got the most dunk blocks in the NCAA. And he's just an absolutely powerful force on both ends of the floor. 14 points, 10 rebounds, four blocks. That's a typical day in the life for Charles Bassey. 11th double doubles this season, tied for the most in college hoops. Western Kentucky fans need to enjoy the Charles Bassey ride as much as they can because I don't know if you're going to see much more of him after this season. He was uh, National Player of the Week last week for his play in the sweep over Marshall. Getting a breather now at the 10:39 mark. Western Kentucky has led pretty much the whole way, led by as many as 13 here in the second half. Trying to win for a fourth consecutive time, get to 13-4, and four, which would be their best start in 19 years. Wow. What were you doing in the 2001-2002 season, Mike? High school, right? I was in high school, yeah, playing for Largo High School in Pinellas County, home of the Packers. We were on our way to a Final Four, I believe. We lost. <laughs> DeAndre Dishman, a nice little move. That was cute, wasn't it? Well, his babe, cute. No, it was smooth, not cute. Yeah, I think it was cute. Don't don't say something is cute on the court, Chris. You got to say something is smooth. That's ridiculous. Dishman has that baby hook shot. It's ultra smooth. I wish he would use it more. Cute, unbelievable. It's a high compliment. Now Anderson five on the shot clock. A little fade away. It was a good look. A uh, foul going on Middle Tennessee as Carson Williams was in there. You say it was a good look, but I think it was a great defensive possession oh, for Middle Tennessee. I mean, I mean, watch this patience. A little crab dribble and then the footwork to spin off of Williams to get an angle. I mean, Dishman's got that nice touch baby hook. Would love to see more of that from Dishman. I think Coach McDevitt would agree. Carson Williams had those seven quick points. That was his first point since the early going in this game. And Coach McDevitt's Blue Raiders, they've really had to fight. They're just not a good shooting team. Easier to find life playing at home in a back-to-back -back than it is on the road. You could you just kind of subconsciously are able to manufacture more energy at home in the second game of a back-to-back. -back. I mean, we're seeing that right now. Middle Tennessee hanging around only down six. That one thrown away. Good idea by Lawrence. Bad execution. You had to step through on that pass. You can't rely on your hands alone to make that pass. This is a rivalry game. 140th meeting all time between Middle Tennessee and Western Kentucky. Began the series back in 1914. Western Kentucky leads the series 96 to 43. Good defense by the Blue Raiders in this possession. Here's Williams, though. Good position inside. Got the double. And Middle Tennessee got the stop. Probably should have been a foul. That was that was hands over the top of Carson Williams' head. Uh, I really thought there was way too much contact underneath the rim. It was a really good defensive possession. I mean, you had two times in which you had to get one-on-one -on -one stops. And let's see. You get the double, that's a foul, Chris. You got to make that call. Well, they did make a call. It was on Williams for the reach in. And Middle Tennessee now in the bonus, as is Western Kentucky. As Chase Johnson earns a second free throw, can cut it to four. 
Western Kentucky won yesterday, 82 to 67. It was not this close at this point in the game. Pulled away early in the second half and really eased into a victory in the first half of this back-to-back. -back. Again, playing without Rick Stansbury. Stayed at home with a fever, but still COVID negative. Phil Cunningham, the head coach. And Luke Frampton's going to get to the free throw line. Not really his game, not really a a driver, a slasher. But he's a good free throw shooter when he gets there. Hasn't missed this season. Well, he moved really well without the basketball. And great shooters, every great shooter always moves well when they don't have the ball. It's the work you do before you catch it that matters the most. I mean, sometimes you just have to make the basketball play, Chris. And that was Luke Frampton making the basketball play. That's Jared Coleman-Jones checking back in with those three fouls for Middle Tennessee as Lawrence takes a seat. Middle Tennessee playing without Donovan Sims, who hurt his knee in practice a couple of days ago. Also playing without Jalen Jordan who dislocated his finger yesterday. And that one goes to Middle Tennessee. A rare miss there for Luke Frampton. Bassey back in. Got a couple minutes on the bench. And we have a whistle here, 8.31 to go. And we'll get a timeout as Phil Cunningham, the acting head coach, has a little bit of a word with one of the officials. Six-point game down the stretch. CBS Sports Network today, presented by Ace Hardware. Next up, we've got Mountain West action. Nevada and Wyoming, followed by Boston University against Lafayette. Six Eastern. Catch it all right here on CBS Sports Network. You saw Davidson beat UMass. And Western Kentucky right now leading Middle Tennessee by six. 8.31 to play. Western Kentucky always involved in tight games. 11 of their 16 games have been decided by six or fewer, and they're 5-0 and oh in games decided by one possession this season. And that's what happens when you're a really efficient team that doesn't play fast. You're going to play a lot of tight games. You know, the, 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 one, the one basic thing that you can look up in the stat sheet that benefits Western Kentucky the most for the fact that they play tight games is they're an excellent free throw shooting team. They shoot 80% from the line from the free throw line as a team, that's absurd. Top 10 in the country. Also top 10 in free throws made. And that one thrown away. Rawls got it stripped. And it'll stay with Western Kentucky. Schuler chased it. It was kind of like when you see a wide receiver Chase down a quarterback when there's an interception. Schuler just chased down Rawls. Like DK Metcalf. It was yeah, exactly, but that was just an incredible effort play by Schuler. ISO for Bassey. 14 footer. Mm. Smooth. I mean, just Kentucky bourbon smooth, man. I mean, th th this Bassey is, I really believe, is going to end up being an All American. And I mean, this is, this is an NBA player, there's no question. Kentucky bourbon or Tennessee whiskey? I don't want to say it in front of the West <laughs> Kentucky fans, but... Oh, Anderson! I'll, a pull up. I'll say hello to Mr. Anderson on that dunk, though. He makes... That's, that's not like an easy play to make. He makes these, these plays around the rim that just look effortless. Let's take another look at Josh Anderson, who had... A great dunk on the other end in the first half. He's always good for two or three of these a game. Nobody throws it down quite like Western Kentucky and they're up 10 again. And it's one of the Josh Anderson dunks. This one for the first half. Does anybody glide better than Josh Anderson? Mr. Smooth in the open floor makes the impossible look easy. And his teammate 
has the most dunks in the country. Charles Bassey was nearing 50 on the season, but those Josh Anderson dunks are something to behold. He just threw another one down here in the second half. And Western Kentucky had that 13-point lead shrink to three. They built it back up to 10 as they look for their fourth consecutive victory. And this is the way that Middle Tennessee is going to climb back into the game. They're certainly not out of it, but you want to get this thing to single digits under the five-minute mark. And if you can get to the free throw line, manufacture points at the line, set up your defense, you're going to be able to chip away at this thing. And the guy that can ignite that is Schuler. And surprisingly enough, they've made more free throws in this game than Western Kentucky. Rawls got it, got it swatted at the rim. 16 on the shot clock. Dishman said, get it out. It's a good drive by Rawls, but Dishman just good timing on that block. Williams. Tried to get it into Bassey, but good defense. Davis in transition. Yes. Wow. No one came up to guard him. Kenny Cooper dropped his head as soon as it went in. He knew he made a mistake. Well, um, it, that play wouldn't have happened if Dishman wouldn't have found an angle to get a deflection on the post-entry pass that was supposed to go to Bassey. It was really good defense by Dishman. Oh, got him. And another stuff from Bassey. That's his third dunk of the game. I just gave Dishman a compliment, and he went for a steal a second time, and Bassey made him pay. Now, Obi Toppin had over 100 dunks last season for Dayton. If, if Western Kentucky plays all of its games from here on out, Bassey might have a chance at 50 already, and we are in the 17th game of the season. Reset, 10 on the shot clock. Rawls gets in. I mean, some of the things that he does, he's just a weapon, pure and simple. Rawls off the bench is an offensive weapon for Western Kentucky. Eight points, 407 from the floor. Has had the ball in his hands a lot in this game. Schuler creating. Good drive. Really tough angle to bank that in. He makes those. I, he makes those tough shots. He doesn't beat you with speed. He beats you with strength and patience. Williams. Good defense. Double team help from Johnson. And Anderson at the elbow. A little too strong. Johnson missed two opportunities to kick out for a three. That one goes in. Javante Milner Chris with a home bounce. It's a four point game under five to play. And a timeout call by the acting head coach, Phil Cunningham. And they're going to get Tavion Hollingsworth back into the game, it appears. Western Kentucky double digit favorites, only up four. Middle Tennessee within four, despite shooting just 33% from the floor. Sometimes it's just bad luck. Maybe if they get a little more good luck like this, they can turn things around. Certainly the home bounce favoring Middle Tennessee. Western Kentucky in these last few possessions have made it a priority to try to go inside, particularly ISO in the post. But Middle Tennessee's post players, their front court, have done a really nice job not giving angles and, and walling up whether it's Bassey or Williams, in the post. Three for five from three in the second half. Oh, I don't know how that got through to Bassey. They're going to get a hold on Middle Tennessee. And most passes get through to Bassey, Chris, because he does a good job of fighting for position. Watch him fight for position right here. Watch his feet. You see his feet always move. And there's a spin. Mm. Doesn't extend his hands. That's textbook. Tight window, though. One and one for Bassey. 
Good job by our replay team. It was a good angle. That looked like uh, Tom Brady fitting one through. I think Charles Bassey moves a little bit faster than Tom Brady. Hey, I'm not talking about the catch. I'm talking about the pass. Oh. I thought you were talking about the pocket presence. <laughs> Six point game as Bassey's up to 20. Yeah, it feels like they're trying to get Schuler some action here. Good kick. Lawrence. Good look. See who has the closing kick here. Final four minutes. And the only game in Conference USA today. Western Kentucky looking to take a full game lead over Old Dominion in the division. Alley up, Bassey. How did he catch that? And How it was did just, he catch it was that? All fingertips. That was wasn't a bad. It? Yeah, that was a bad pass. Charles Bassey doesn't have fingertips. He's got oven mitts. <laughs> I mean, that's incredible. Middle Tennessee really needed that one. 3.30 to go. Western Kentucky going to use some clock up by eight. Well, now's the time, even if you're exhausted, you got to turn up the defensive pressure in the half court. You've got to force Western Kentucky away from the action that they want to run. Bassey gets held. He's going to get back to the free throw line. One and one on the other side. Go back to that last stuff. The fourth dunk of the game for Bassey. Going up higher than our camera. 12 feet in the air. Western by eight. Middle Tennessee's big man Jared Coleman Jones just fouled out. They're down by eight against Western Kentucky and Charles Bassey as we check in on the AT&T 5G fast analysis. Bassey, 22 points, 11 rebounds. And it's not just the dunks, right? It's the work he does to get the dunk. He never stops moving. He's got great feet, great timing, and he catches every single pass that's thrown at him. That's a bad pass, but not for Charles Bassey. Every time Middle Tennessee gets close, they get within three, get within four, Western has responded. It's an eight-point lead with 3.16 to go. I just mentioned how Coleman Jones has fouled out. Javante Milner, Chris, who's another one of their quote unquote big men at 6'6, has four fouls. No foul trouble at all and for it, Western Kentucky. If we know that, Western Kentucky's coaching staff knows that. So, what would be the obvious response when you see Middle Tennessee's front court in foul trouble? Keep going inside. And Milner, Chris, is out there with those four fouls, wearing number 21. One more for Bassey. The best way to negate post-entry passes is with great ball pressure. So it's just as important for the backcourt of Middle Tennessee to apply great ball pressure to negate some of those easy post-entry passes that Western Kentucky is trying to achieve. Nice pass. And they got it in the middle of that zone. But Bassey comes up with another rebound. That's number 12. Under three to play for Western Kentucky, looking to get to 13 and four overall, six and two in conference play. And if you're trying to come back here, the Hilltoppers are just too comfortable. Rawls one on one. Ooh, oh, that man. was nifty. Oh man, he caught him with the cross, and then the body control in the air. The Hilltopper weapon off the bench. Well, I think we may have gotten a technical foul. Let's take another look. He uh, hits him with the rocker cross a la Allen Iverson. And then a strong, tough finish. And then a little, little bit of backyard smack talk there from Rawls. Yeah, that's two technical fouls on Western Kentucky. Tavion Hollingsworth was teed up by this officiating crew earlier. And now Rawls, but... No fans in the stands. You can hear everything, Chris. <laughs> you can't. You got to be. You got to be silent because the refs can hear every single thing. Coaches, players included. Rawls heads to the bench. Ten points, and he thought he was bumped there and had 
a little something to say. Played in his case. I wonder what Coach Stansbury thinks watching at home right now. Probably not happy. A tough shot by Schuler. Gets his own rebound. Blocked again by Bassey. I mean, it's he's he's like the greatest volleyball player to ever play college basketball. It's just an absolute machine. The timing on his blocks. Now he came in with the most blocks in the country, averaging three a game. He has five in this one. Anderson for three. It's a good box out right there by DeAndre Dishman. I mean, it, it's three-point shooting time. You got to get up a couple threes. You got to get them up in a hurry. And a timeout call by Nick McDevitt, the head coach at Middle Tennessee. Uh, another rough shooting night for the Blue Raiders. 30% from the floor, 5 of 21 from three-point range. The defense is really good. The Blue Raiders defense, their energy, their effort, every single time they step on the floor is excellent. It's aggressive, it's physical, it's in your face. Offensively, from an X's and O's, and uh, uh, essentially just a skill standpoint, they just lack perimeter shooting. They have good guards to attack the rim, but they're not getting plays at the rim or they're not getting the free throw line. They just don't have enough shooters to win these kind of close games. And it doesn't get any easier. Next up, we'll have that game at UAB on Thursday night right here on CBS Sports Network. And this thing might come down to Western Kentucky and UAB in the conference tournament. It's separate divisions this season, but those two teams appear to be the class of the conference at this point. Yeah, I agree, but I, I, I do think that Western Kentucky is just ahead of the pack in that regard. Certainly Marshall with, with the, uh, uh, Kinsey, Tavian Kinsey has a lot of offensive firepower. They're never out of any ball game just because of how fast, quick, and open their offense is. But Western Kentucky on both ends of the floor, for me, there just isn't a team or a player in Conference USA that can match up with Charles Bassey. Well, let's see what they drew up out of the timeout. They get a good look for three, but Jordan Davis is short. There's one thing that Western Kentucky can work on this upcoming week. It's pulling down those defensive rebounds. They've allowed a lot of extra looks and extra possessions for Middle Tennessee. In fact, the Blue Raiders have taken 11 more shots than Western Kentucky has in this game because they've given up so many offensive rebounds. By my count, now 12 for the game for Middle Tennessee. Is Kenny Cooper knocks down the free throw. You know, it'll be really interesting to see if if Western Kentucky doesn't win the Conference USA Tournament, what the committee does from an at-large perspective for the Hilltoppers. I mean, they have an 80 net ranking right now. They got five wins inside of the net top 100, including that monster win at Alabama, who's currently has an, uh, a net ranking of nine. And they've got they've beaten Memphis, Rhode Island, Marshall twice, and that win at Alabama. It's certainly conceivable that they will get a serious at-large look come tournament time. And we talked with Rick Stansbury about that earlier in the week, and you know he admitted, look, we can't stumble much, and, and he's not here in this game. That's the acting head coach, Phil Cunningham, as Rick Stansbury watches at home with a fever, though he's. COVID negative. He said, we've got one of the best non-conference wins in the nation. And he yep. said, look, right now, we're the SEC champs until somebody beats <laughs> Alabama. The Crimson Tide is still unbeaten in SEC play. And Coach Stansbury said, look, if, if they're all about the eye test, the committee, you use the eye test on us because the eye test will show you that this is one of the 68 deserving teams, even if they don't win the tournament. Well, yeah, you lost to West Virginia who is absolutely an NCAA tournament team, going to be an at-large team. You only lost to them by six. You, you did take, I mean, they took a wall up against Louisville. They lost it by 20 against Louisville. Then they lost to Charlotte in overtime and Louisiana Tech on the second night of a back-to-back. -back. And that Louisiana Tech, again, that's a, that's a very good Conference USA team. It, it, it's, you can't have those losses to Charlotte and Louisiana Tech 
anymore in conference play. You drop a game to Marshall, I get it, right? UAB, I get it. But really, outside of those two teams, no more room for error when it's talking at large. And up next, supposed to be a, an Old Dominion team coming in, which would be a matchup of the top two teams in the East Division, but Old Dominion just paused operations a, a few days ago due to COVID, and Rick Stansbury did not seem optimistic that that's going to happen. He was wondering if the conference would allow them to maybe go outside of the conference and play. I know North Texas did that when uh, they had a series canceled early in January, played at Loyola Chicago, but that was that was before North Texas had played a conference game. Yeah, I, I, it'd be great just from a right viewer standpoint for Western Kentucky to find a non-conference game at this time during the season to continue to try to build their resume. I think it'd be awesome. We've seen that quick scheduling can get done, but the question is who is the team that would want to match up with the Hilltoppers right now? Off to their best start in 19 years. Phil Cunningham coaches Western Kentucky to back-to-back -back victories against rival Middle Tennessee, and the Hilltoppers are 13-4 and overall. Six and two in conference play, a full game ahead of Old Dominion in the division. Going to take a quick timeout. When we come back, we'll talk to Charles Bassey as we get ready for Nevada and Wyoming coming up at the top of the hour. Western Kentucky wins its fourth straight, stays in first in the division, and off to its best start in 19 seasons. Charles Bassey leading the way, right. 23 points, 14 rebounds, five blocks, and he joins us live here on CBS Sports Network. Charles, interesting weekend with Coach Stansbury staying back home and Phil Cunningham leading the team. How was that for you guys? Uh, it was it was good. We know we know we're gonna we, we, we're gonna come here with our head coach. Well, you know, that's, like you said, player-driven. That's all you said. So when you're coming in this weekend, we gotta, uh, we got to win the two, both games. And, you know, just we as, a, we as players, we talk with ourselves. And, like, we got to go out there and play hard. Yesterday and today, we did our job. We got both wins. Hey, Charles, do you ever talk to your guards after the game and say, hey, I know I can catch everything around the rim. Could you, but you guys throw some better lob passes to me, some easier ones, instead of throwing them at the top of the backboard? I mean, I, I said, I said, I said, tall guy, you know, bad pass, go pass. I should be able to catch any of them if I can. No, so, I mean, I, I tell them every game, but, you know, it just depends on how they do it. So, either way, I, I got to go get the ball. Charles, we know how difficult it is in Conference USA and a lot of other conferences this season to pull off a sweep. You had splits in the first two series in Conference USA, but you swept Marshall last week. You sweep Middle Tennessee this week. What has clicked for you guys these last four games? Like, like Coach said, it's all mental, man, you know. Uh, it's easy to win the first game. It's the second game that's, it's, that, that's the idea. You know, you're going to be tired back to back. You know, it's just it's all mental. Coming, coming in during the second game, getting your body ready. You know, you're going to feel tired, but, man, as soon as you step on the court, you just, you got to get ready to play. So that's, that's what we do. We, I know against uh, Charlotte, against Louisiana Tech, we didn't do, we didn't do that, but, you know, as, as a player on, on our team, you know, we talk within ourselves and we're like, yo, we got to, we got to do this every time, come in and just win both games. Charles, do you feel you guys have something special brewing there? You've got a lot of talent in the front court and back court. I mean, what do you want to say to Hilltoppers Nation in terms of how talented you think you guys are and what you think you can be this season? I mean, definitely there's talent on the team, but talent don't win your games. You know, uh, it's, it's the way you play hard. You know, hard work win your games, you know. You can, be, you can have a lot of talent on your team, but if you don't play hard, it's, it's, it's nothing. So you got to – with the talent, we've got to play hard every time. So I just – no, we have talent, but we just got to play hard every, every time, every possession. And I just you know we're playing hard every possession. Just hard work, big hard work, hard work beat talents every time. So we just got to just do what we can and just come in the game and just play hard every time, every possession, and just get the win. One more quick question for you, Charles. You lead the country in dunks. You lead the country in blocks. Which one do you enjoy more? Both. <laughs> 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 I got to do that every time, man, you know. <laughs> I mean, kudos to my guys for giving me the, the loves. And, you know, I mean, the block is all instinct and just all, you know, just defensive instinct. That's it. Had about five dunks, had about five blocks, 23 points, 14 rebounds. Congrats on your fourth straight win. Thank you. Charles Bassey and the victorious Western Kentucky Hilltoppers off to their best start since the 01-02 season. 19 years.
at 13 and four overall and six and two in conference play. Coming right back. Coming up next right here on CBS Sports Network, out in the Mountain West, Nevada and Wyoming, Tom McCarthy and Pete Gillen on the call as we wrap things up from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Western Kentucky with its fourth consecutive win after a two and two start in conference now six and two a one game lead over Old Dominion Middle Tennessee drops to one and five with Michael Donald I'm Chris Hassel we came on the broadcast talking about Western Kentucky playing like an at large tournament team it's a road win bottom line and they swept it at Middle Tennessee back-to-back -back road wins. Mm -hmm. It's so hard to win that second game of the of the back-to-back -back road series. I like what Conference USA is doing. It's really tough on the players. At the end of the day, Middle Tennessee, two things. They couldn't put the ball in the hoop. They did not shoot the ball very well, and there was no answer for Charles Bassey. He was extraordinary this afternoon. Bassey, yet another double-double. Leads the country in dunks, rebounds, blocks, and now double-doubles with his 11th in this game. He goes for 23 points, 14 rebounds, and five blocks. It's hard to keep up with everything Charles Bassey is doing for Western Kentucky. They do legit look like a tournament team. All-American candidate Charles Bassey and the role players stepping up. So much talent for Western Kentucky. This offense is hard to slow down. That was the only game in Conference USA today. Up next, Mountain West basketball, Nevada and Wyoming. For Mike O'Donnell and our entire crew, I'm Chris Hassel. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Two more games coming up. Boston Lafayette later, Nevada, Wyoming.